Coming up on Agri TV, ag leaders talk about how the election could affect farm policy. One of the biggest farmers in the region addresses rumors that his operation is on the brink of disaster. And we'll tell you why this woman is traveling the country to talk to farmers in all 50 states. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Now that the election is behind us, many are wondering what's next. Agriculture was left out of the campaign discussion and very little is known about Trump's ag policy. We asked newly re-elected North Dakota Senator John Hoven and Representative Kevin Kramer what they think a Republican administration could mean for farmers. Both agree the next farm bill will be among their highest priorities. Making sure the farm bill is what I call farmer friendly, reducing that regulatory burden. I do a lot of work on crop insurance because that's a key risk management tool for our farmers and ranchers. Uh, but in all those areas, try to make sure that we work through this time of low commodity prices, come out the other end and, and make sure they're healthy. One thing we need to do is roll back the regulations that are adding to the cost of farming. That's unfair to the farmer and it's not even good for uh, it's not good for any part of the economy and certainly not good for people that buy food, which is everybody. The current farm bill expires at the end of 2018, so that means work will begin on the new one in the middle of next year. One big concern for commodity organizations is trade. The Trans-Pacific Partnership has been in the works for the past several years with 12 Pacific Rim countries and is viewed as a major market booster. But with a new president soon, that now seems less likely. The talk was all, let's tear the trade agreements apart and start over. And unfortunately, they don't happen very quickly. The TPP has been under discussion for the last four years. So it's not a quick process to change 16,000 tariffs in a number of countries and get everybody to agree. So for us, um, in an export-centric crop like soybeans, all the talk about trade and putting huge uh, tariffs on, on things from China that could potentially have a, a, a bad effect in North Dakota. North Dakota corn and I'm sure a lot of the other commodity groups we've been uh, concerned about the federal overreach of the Obama administration, uh, the EPA uh, rules, whether it's uh, trying to get atrazine uh, off the market or the, the wetlands uh, issues, uh, you know, you name it, the RFS, uh, the biofuels uh, issue. Those are all things that we've been working on uh, for several years uh, and you know perhaps this uh, election will uh, show uh, that there could be a change up on some of those regulatory issues. Irie says the Corn Growers Group is working to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership passed before January 20th in fear it won't get passed once Trump takes office. That's the same concern Randy Martinson has as a market analyst for Martinson Ag Risk Management. In the first hundred days are going to tell us quite a bit. Yeah, a lot of it is, will be centered around trade, I believe, and, and agriculture is very dependent on uh, the exports, especially this year with our production as big as it is. We need to have the exports that we're seeing for soybeans and for corn and for wheat, and, and even with the meat side of things as far as beef is concerned. Ag Week's Michelle Rook talked to Washington insiders at the National Association of Farm Broadcasting Convention this week to get their take on the election and what it could mean to farming. I'm Michelle Rook here at the NAFB convention in Kansas City where the big talk was the election and what a Trump presidency will mean for agriculture. Farm Bureau's Bob Young says with Trump's business background, he'll support agriculture. Pretty clearly rural America was a real strong component of their uh, their election base. Uh, and I think they recognize that. Or I think they'll recognize that as we roll forward. Washington insider Jay Truitt expects a new administration to roll back taxes and regulation. The regulatory environment is the easiest one for him to address. He can take on waters of the U.S. He can take on some of the EPA regulations that, that have just really crippled 
people's operations. And John Doggett with the National Corn Growers Association believes Trump will support biofuels. He has said consistently uh, and without fail that he supports the renewable fuel standard. We're going to hold him to that. However, there is some concern about the president-elect's trade policy as he wants to rework TPP and NAFTA. His contention is that the United States has not gotten the best deal out of some of those trade agreements. And with Republicans holding the majority in the Senate and House, the Ag Committees will not see much change, which is positive going into a new farm bill. In Kansas City, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. As far as who will be the new Ag Secretary, there are several names circulating, but the only consensus is that it'll be a name known in Ag circles. Some experts are predicting that high costs and low commodity prices could drive as many as 20% of North Dakota producers out of business. Ag Commissioner Doug Goring says his office is considering ramping up its credit counseling efforts. Mikkel Pates talked to an ag lender who says cattle producers may need to make some changes in order to stay in business. Shauna, recent price trends have caused some alarm by some uh, lenders, especially in the livestock area, as they head into 2017. Concerning cattle, the big problem is you've seen a 30 to 50 percent drop in calves and nobody could have planned for that. So uh, when you take somebody's income and you cut it near half, it becomes a significant problem. But of course it's not just cattle producers who are struggling. I think it's going to be harder for all producers because all commodity prices are down. It's a unique situation in that not usually cattle and grain are down at the same time. Schmidt says rents are still at record highs and he doesn't see any signs that they are coming down. So he says with high expenses and income being cut by as much as half, it will be tough for some to pay their lines of credit in full and make their longer term debt. If you've been uh, a little more conservative, you're probably not going to have a problem. If you have a lot of term chattel debt, that's where you might run into the problem. Uh, I do expect operating loans to be paid back. It'll just be the, the term debt that might be hard to make. This downturn does not appear to be short term at this time. Um, so you need to cut enough expenses to keep yourself at least marginally profitable for the next couple years if, uh, if it goes back up at that time. The price situation looks difficult. It's a question of how long and how low it goes. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates in the Bismarck Man Dan area. Schmidt says one problem is high land rental rates, but he says some renters and landowners are entering profit sharing agreements based on production. Is he too big to fail or too big to succeed? One of the region's biggest farmers addresses rumors that his operation is in trouble. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. for the latest news in agriculture, AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable, trusted, AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. 
support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. The American Farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm Certified Agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations. We're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. I'm Ray Trudeau, an elite farm certified agent, and I'm on your side. He's one of the biggest farmers in the region, but you might not have ever heard of him or even know what he looks like. Ron McMartin Jr. keeps a low profile, but he farms nearly 40,000 acres, mostly in northeastern North Dakota. The scale of his farming activities have made him the subject of rumors during this time of low commodity prices. Michael Pates recently sat down with McMartin at his St. Thomas, North Dakota farm to learn more. Sean, a difficult commodity prices can create curiosity about how farmers will succeed, especially the large ones. But as I found out from Ron McMartin here at St. Thomas, North Dakota, things are not always as they seem. It's not easy. Margins aren't there. Um, and certainly costs don't come down as fast as revenues do. So uh, is there reason for people to be concerned in, in production ag right now? I, I am. The rumors are that McMartin's huge operation is failing under the weight of low prices and high inputs. The farm has scaled back in recent years from the 59,000 acres he farmed at the peak in 2012 to 39,000 today. Can we be a, a source of definitely the rumor mill and so forth and so on? Um, it's nothing new and it's probably never ever going to be uh, any different than it is, but uh, um, I, will, I will say this honestly, uh, you know, farming is not fun right now. And uh, you know we need we need everything that we have planted to be harvested. We need to uh, get paid for what we've planted, and uh, and uh, we need to see something improve in this economy, and we need it soon. The farm has grossed as many as 45 million dollars in annual crop sales, but that has dropped by about 10 million dollars. He says that's simply an appropriate response to market conditions. Growth is great, and it makes sense when you're profitable and regression makes sense when you're shedding things that aren't profitable. Regardless of their size, farmers will have to adapt and work hard to get through this tough economy. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. Mikkel will have much more on his interview with Ron McMartin in Monday's Ag Week magazine. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Jamestown, North Dakota, where we found Donald Bear harvesting corn. He says it's a great crop. That area is seeing a lot of 200 bushel corn. The average crop is about 150 bushels per acre. For Bear, 2016 will be a corn harvest to remember. This will be the best year I've ever had by, by quite a bit. The, this, this individual piece right here, which I mean, I want to do a good job because it's right by the highway, but I think it's going to average two and a quarter, maybe 230 if I'm lucky in the end. Yeah, that's crazy. Bear says soybean yields were way above average there too, with about 65 bushels an acre. The weather has been cooperating as harvest wraps up. How long will it last? Your agri-weather forecast is next. And later, what's the best way to vaccinate your cattle? Our livestock specialist weighs in. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. 
reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. The first half of November is being one of the mildest on records in many parts of the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest and Southern Canada. One day last week it was 66 in Winnipeg, it was 70 in Calgary, but the first cold air of the season seems about ready to strike. Now by cold, how cold do I mean? Well, I'll define that here coming up in just a minute. The arrival of the cold air will probably kick off some type of snowstorm, a potential snowstorm this week across some part of the Northern Plains Upper Midwest region. Can't say exactly where. In fact, I really can't say at all where it will be, but it'll be a narrow swath of potentially fairly heavy snow. And this all sums up to be the really the, for the first time the start of the winter season. The jet stream, which has been way up north for so much of the fall season, and in particular the last couple of weeks, at times going way up into central Canada, it's finally beginning to drop southward just a little bit. So all this consistently warm weather that we've had across the northern plains beginning to drop. Pacific Northwest has been wet. That won't change. Big low pressure, which has been parked out in the uh, North Pacific, a piece of that is going to break off and move inland, and that will really begin to shake things up. So early this week we'll see things cooling off slightly. Then as the low moves into the Rockies, the rain gets reinforced in the Pacific Northwest, and at some point that will then start to move out into the Plain States. And as it does so, cold weather will begin to build southward. Now this is that cold weather, which I mentioned last week as coming across from eastern Siberia, but it's not going to be all of that. It's not going to be 40 below weather. It's just going to be cold. The first below freezing weather in our region that we've seen. Meanwhile, the low pressure system, wherever it moves out, will have a pretty good chance to produce a swath of snow. Could be the Dakotas, western or eastern. Could be Iowa, Nebraska. Could be even further south. It really depends on the track of the low, and that's, as always, tricky to forecast. But it will likely bring that cold air southward. And there will be many of these areas in dark blue that will have sub-freezing highs, I think, by late this week. And the next week, which is Thanksgiving week, the cold air may briefly retreat before it then comes back again later on in the week. So what does this mean for December? Well, this is an early guess. I'll try to refine this as we go through the next few weeks, but I do expect it December to be a little colder than average. Now, it may not all be that way. We'll have a little cold early. Then I think we'll go back to kind of average through the mid part of December while the southwest stays quite mild. Cold weather, I think, may come back again toward late December. There's some speculation in there, and that's, at this point, not something you would bank on. But that's the way it looks right now. So here's what we're talking about. Early November weather, of course, has been very mild. It will be turning colder in the next couple of weeks. Finally, winter getting a start across the northern plains and upper Midwest. Make the ultimate upgrade this harvest with Goodyear LSW tires. LSW improves your footprint by up to 37% and gives you the ability to carry larger loads at lower inflation pressures, reducing soil compaction for a better yield next season. LSW tires are proven to reduce road load, making sure you can run at full speed from field to field, expediting your harvest. Visit your local Graham Tire to make the switch. When you reap the benefits of LSW tires, you'll know you're in Graham country. I'm Jenny Garth. 
And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. The American farmer. You nurture the land, the livestock, and the future of agriculture. Nationwide and your local On Your Side Farm certified agent stand with you to help protect your farm and ranch operations. We're in this together. I've been working with farmers and ranchers for over 30 years, and I understand the demands and risks they face. It's important for me to build a personal relationship with each and every customer. It's what I do. I'm Ray Trudeau, an elite farm certified agent, and I'm on your side. A vaccine study done a few years ago was recently published in a bovine practitioner journal. Livestock specialist Gerald Stucka is here now with some updated information on the study. We vaccinate cattle for various diseases to protect them from these diseases. In this case, this vaccine study was, was done with actually two routes of administration. The one route was what we call parenteral, which means we gave a vaccine typically in the neck region and under the skin. The other route of administration was, what to, was to put vaccine right up the nose. We call it an intranasal route of, of administration. The reason that's important is that for respiratory pathogens, that's the natural route of infection. So what we found in, in that study was when we gave the primary dose to young calves and followed that up 150 days later with a second dose, we actually got an enhanced response to that primary dose being given intranasal versus the, the, the initial dose being given sub-Q followed by sub-Q. It's called a prime boost. In other words, whatever that animal sees as the initial exposure, that immune system actually remembers that first dose and where it was given. And the protection goes back to that nasal passages because the first dose was given there. It, it's, it's not novel necessarily, but we're learning more about the route of administration than we've ever known before. So intranasal for some of these pathogens we're trying to protect against, particularly the virus pathogens, pretty critical that that first dose be given at the route of administration of where the natural infection actually occurs. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you why this recent college graduate is visiting farmers in all 50 states. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. 
Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. We do anything for kids. Yet one in five children in the U.S. struggle with hunger. Help end childhood hunger near you. Learn how at feedingamerica.org. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. A recent agribusiness graduate is on an epic mission to interview farmers in all 50 states. Natalina Sense graduated from Iowa State in May and a week later set off on her Why I Farm road trip. She's visiting mostly by car at least two farmers in every state and is blogging about her adventure. She's about halfway through right now. Natalina partnered with Beck's Hybrids, an Indiana family-owned seed company that started the Why I Farm movement. So far, she's visited more than 50 farms ranging from five acres to 5,000. She's also toured wineries, breweries, and other specialty ag operations. She was recently in Grafton and Annetta, North Dakota before heading to South Dakota. So our goal is simply to honor the American farmer. That's the mission of the YF Farm Road Trip. We're seeing a lot of people excited about the road trip and engaging on social media and, and sharing the, the stories of farmers they're finding and meeting in their own backyard, which is pretty exciting. Every time I set foot onto a farm, there's this new excitement, a new story. You can follow Why I Farm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or her blog at whyifarm.com slash blog. This adventure will end in May of 2017. It was fun to get out with other members of the ag media and share our Ag Week TV story with possible future ag communicators. I had a chance to speak to a class of ag communication students at NDSU and offer advice on a career in agriculture, as well as talk about how I got into the industry. This week's photo of the week comes from Osnabrock, North Dakota. It's a shot of Jeff Flink and his grandson, Jace, going out to do field work. Too cute. If you want to see your ag photos on Ag Week TV, email your photo and a description of what's happening in the picture to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. We enjoyed having you along. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.